come again. We are together again. We are praising the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Bishop Peter Katimu reaching out to you from Nairobi. Apostolic Faith Church, Bahati. I love Christ. We have prayed that we know God is with us. Now we are in part eight. Uh, made for warfare. Now, last time we shared about Judges chapter 7. When God demanded all who are fearful and afraid to go back. And later God demanded all those who are not awake and conscious for warfare, warfare should go back. In Jesus Christ's name, I want to pray for you now that the God we serve will anoint you with the strength you need to withstand. Right now before I preach, I want to pray for your heart. I want to pray for your soul. You have been withdrawing and devil is so happy that we withdrew from business. We withdrew from marriage. You have even been forced to withdraw from active, active way of raising your children. I now release the full baptism of the Holy Ghost on you. I release the full boldness from the resurrected Jesus on you. In Jesus' name, Satan be crushed under the feet of God's children. By the word of God, we declare that. Receive it, my brother, my sister. Believe God. Today we embark on part eight. That is very important. And Jesus Christ will help us. Uh, now, last time we also touched on what we call arise and decide. And I would like you now to just remind, remind you about the prodigal son. One thing that constitutes might for warfare is when you arise and decide. The prodigal son in Luke chapter 15, verse 17, did one of the things that need to be done for us to be restored back to the order. Luke 15, the Bible says, verse 17, the Bible says, and when he came to himself, one thing I would like to preach now at this time and this season after COVID is people coming back to themselves. We have been subjected to threat. We have been subjected to a lifestyle that wanted to produce itself in us. The loose and regulation that we have been under, if you are not careful, they have church families and they have church churches. Even today, there are churches whose membership in one is one third of what it used to be. One quarter, one eighth, even some churches have closed. Some families have withdrawn from social life. No visit, no praying together, no gathering, nothing like that. It's as if we are being produced to another lifestyle that appear to be rational and acceptable and we have enough facts for it, but it's not real. It's not real. And therefore, I urge you by the masses of God, come back to yourself. Come back to yourself. I say, come back to yourself. He came back to himself and said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go back. One of the facts about might of a warfare, come back to yourself. I know there are so many people who are undergoing depression. You are still awake. You know you are who, who you are. Come back to yourself. I know there are those teenagers during COVID or maybe somewhere or another. You fell into the hands of people, irresponsible people. And you had some pregnancy, maybe, you know, other pregnancies in teenagers. 
you are a teenager of 15 years, a teenager of 14 years, and you don't have a baby. Somebody just came and had sex with you, not to live with you, not to support you, but just to misuse your body. And he ran away. You're living like a misused young girl who has no right. It happened because you are desperate. It happened because maybe you sought some kind of fellowship. You are too lonely. It happened because you are low spiritually. And you never discerned the attack. It happened because you are full of lust. And you couldn't hear the Holy Ghost. You just followed the lust. Whatever happened, can you come back to yourself? You can't just stay down there. You are a young man. You resorted to drug abuse. You've taken marijuana to its extreme. You've taken alcohol and all forms of drugs. Yes, you did it with a reason which is not truly really acceptable. But to you at that time, it was acceptable to you, not that it is the truth that should apply. You are there. Your life appeared not to have a definition. Nothing in you is a priority. Everything appeared to be the same, same level. You don't have what is supposed to be the main subject, the main issue of life today. It's no longer important. You are a student, but because of the drug misuse, you don't even have interest in what should be your role and your, your commitment now. You are at the age of 20 years. You are supposed to be, to be now entering what we call occupation decision. That mind that ought to decide is the mind that has been destroyed by the drug. You, whenever you try to make a decision, your mind is not leading to work to that level because it is suppressed. It's that the, the main part of your brain that should be serious cannot function. It's full of drugs effect. But still the Holy Ghost can quicken you. The Holy Ghost can raise you. If Jesus died and rose from the dead, there's power in Jesus to quicken even the drug addicts and to restore you back to life. Come back to yourself. And now, even if you don't have capacity to reason in fullness, you have an entry point. There's a door open before you where you can stand. Start making one step after another. And very soon you ultimately become better. Come back to yourself. Listen a little bit. This one said, in my father's house, hired servants are of a feeding. While I am eating with the pigs, in my father's house, if I report there, I will not be a hired servant. I'm still a son. Let me go there because I'll never be otherwise. I can only be a son in that house. And I have to feed like a son. I'll live like a son. I say, if you're going to have might for warfare, you need to come back to yourself and be restored. The father is waiting. And to him, you can only be a daughter or a son but not otherwise. Don't despise yourself. Arise and come to the Lord God Almighty. He loves you. The same happened to the four lepers in 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 3, who said, if we stay here, we will die. If you go back to Samaria, we will die. When people are feeding, even on children, extreme famine, drought, suffering, the whole nation was besieged by an army of Syrian army. No food would enter. Nothing, nothing, nothing. All entry point for food and supply was blocked. And the city starved until people would, would slaughter their own children. But God used the four rappers who said, if we stay here, we will die. 
if we go back to Samaria, we who have been discarded and denounced and whatever, we will die. Let's move across to the Syrian army. And God caused the army to run away. And these people accessed. They were able to get there. In the first tent, there was a lot of food, a lot of gold, a lot, a lot, until they were able to call the whole nation to get food, gold, clothing from so many tents that were deserted by the Assyrian army. And things changed. That's very, very important. Another thing that will cause us to have the might for warfare is what happened in 2 Chronicles chapter 14. The Bible says something. We call that restoration. And Abijah died, rested with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David. Then Asher, his son, reigned in his place. And in his days, the Lord was quiet for ten years. And in his days, the Lord was quiet for ten years. What brought peace for ten years? One, the Bible says, verse 2, 2 Chronicles 14, verse 2, And Asher did what was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. One thing that is part of the might for warfare is doing what is good and right in the eyes of the Lord your God. That's very, very important. Another thing that King Asher did, he deliberately removed, in verse 2, the altars of the foreign gods and the high places and broke down the sacred pillars, cut down the wooden images, and commanded Judah to seek the Lord God of their fathers and observe the law and the commandments. This is something you do deliberately and forcefully. He said, now, I have to bring down, pull down every idol god, altars of satanic gods, Break down pillars of places where these satanic gods used to have places of worship or whatever. Yes, might for warfare will destroy altars of witchcraft, altars of satanism. I remember one time that this young lady who, you, who, who was very active in our wedding, when she was a young girl, she was one of the pioneers of Pentecostal church in their county. And one Saturday, she noticed the key people in that county were all driving to us. A very strong, a very strong witch. And by the power of the Holy Ghost, this lady felt he, she should go there and see what is going on where all leaders, key leaders, members of parliament, yes, were going there. When he went there, she found a huge number of people virtually naked, being addressed by a witch. And that lady walked straight to the witch. And people thought by the powers of that, that witch doctor, that witch used to apply, that tiny young girl would never leech where that witch was. She walked right to the altar where the witch was operating. And she said, in the name of Jesus, I destroyed this altar. I destroyed by the blood of Christ. The witch fell down, started vomiting. Can you imagine? That lady stood right where the witch fell and commanded all people who had come to see the witch man to dress, to repent, and come to Jesus. And that was 
a starting point of a big church in that county. Yes, the might for warfare you require, you deliberately remove satanic altars. You can live in a nested where there's an altar of devil worship, satanism, and you fail to destroy it. You, you sense that there's something wrong with this. And when you pray and pray and pray, something will happen. That's very important. And I want to tell you, friends, by God's grace, you need to change. You need to change. Arise and decide. Change your mind into warfare mind. Change your mind. Change your mind now. Do not allow yourself to stay there and perish. Arise and decide like the prodigal son. Arise and decide like the four rapers at the gate of Samaria. Arise and decide like King Asher of Judah. Today, the Lord is waiting for your decision. He will use you from today to pull down strongholds and to bring the right order. The Lord will receive you as a son. And God will never allow you to be otherwise. To him you will be a son and a daughter with the full rights of the kingdom. Don't allow yourself to withdraw. Whatever happened to you is okay, but there's chance to experience God's love. Arise now, go back, for you will be empowered as a son or daughter of the kingdom. Receive this calling in just Christ's name. Father, receive that daughter. Receive that son. Receive that family. Receive that husband, that wife, that father. And cause them now to be restored to the right position of son and daughter of the kingdom. In Christ we pray.